Good morning and welcome to Bible in a Year as we go through today, day 130 of Bible in a Year as we cover the Bible in 365 days. Uh, right now we are going through the period of royal period uh, because we've broken down the Bible into different sections known as the Adventure Timeline created by Jeff Cavins. Um, I'll be going through each and every day here with you. My name is Pastor Jay Lutz. And today we're going through 2 Samuel chapter 12, 1 Chronicles chapter 16, and Psalm 51. Now, uh, as we go through this, we see that King David is a flawed hero. He's a sinner and a broken man. David's sin in the dark was brought into the light so God could save him. He's an example of God's ability to save. Now, for all of us, God needs to uncover our sins, bring us out into the light to expose what the, that which is done in the darkness. And he does this because he loves us. He wants us to turn back to him. And he uses people to do that at times. Uh, in this case, Nathan, the prophet, tells David the Lord forgives him, but there's consequences uh, to his actions, uh, as is always the case. First Chronicles uh, 16, we read that David establishes the ark in a tent. Again, the focus is on the kingdom and on the worship of God. Ultimately, God wants his kingdom to be established to the world, which will occur with the coming of the Messiah. Jesus. So all these have been temporary fixes, um, but one day it will be permanent. As we have seen, God wants his people to worship him in a particular way. David appoints certain Levites to be ministers before the ark of the Lord, to invoke, to thank, to praise the God of Israel. Uh, this is a good model for our prayer life. Psalm 51, a psalm of confession. Uh, in this psalm, David reveals a fourth element of prayer, repentance. Repentance involves turning away from evil, living in the light, and seeking the Lord. All good things to learn. So let's get into this. 2 Samuel chapters 12. The Lord sent Nathan to David. When he came to him, he said, There were two men in a, rich in a certain town, one rich and the other poor. The rich man had a very large number of sheep and cattle, but the poor man had nothing except one little ewe lamb. He had bought. He raised it and grew it up with him and his children. It shared his food, drank from his cup, and even slept in his arms. It was like a daughter to him. Now a traveler came to the rich man, but the rich man refrained from taking one of his own sheep or cattle to prepare a meal for the traveler who had come to him. Instead, he took the ewe lamb that belonged to the poor man and prepared it for the one who had come to him. David burned with anger against the man and said to Nathan, as surely as the Lord lives, the man who did this deserves to die. He must pay for that lamb four times over because he did such a thing and had no pity. Then Nathan said to David, You are that man. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says, I anointed you king over Israel and I delivered you from the hands of Saul. I gave your master's house to you and your master's wives into your arms. I gave you the house of Israel and Judah. And if all this had been too little, I would have given you even more. Why did you despise the word of the Lord by doing what was evil in his eyes? You struck down Uriah the Hittite with the sword and took his wife to be your own. You killed him with the sword of the Ammonites. Now, therefore, the sword will never depart from your house because you despised me and took the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your own. This is what the Lord says. Out of your own household, I am going to bring calamity upon you. Before your very eyes, I will take your wives and give them to one who is close to you, and you will lie, and he will lie with your wives in broad daylight. You did it in secret, but I will do this in broad daylight before all Israel. And David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. Nathan replied, The Lord has taken away your sin. You are not going to die. But because by doing this you have made the enemies of the Lord show you utter contempt, the son born to you will die. After Nathan had gone home, the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife had bore to David, and he became ill. David pleaded with God for the child. He fasted and went to his house and spent the night lying on the ground. The elders of his household stood beside him to get him up from the ground, but he refused and he would not eat any food with them. On the seventh day, the child died. David's servants were afraid to tell him that the child was dead. For they thought, while the child was still living, we spoke to David, but he would not listen to us. How can we tell him the child is dead? He may do something desperate. David noticed that his servants were whispering amongst themselves, and he realized the child was dead. Is the child dead? he asked. Yes, they replied. He is dead. 
And David got up from the ground. After he had washed, put on lotion, and changed his clothes, he went into the house of the Lord and worshipped. Then he went to his own house, and at his request they served him food, and he ate. His servant asked him, Why are you acting this way? While the child was alive, you fasted and went, but now that the child is dead, you get up and eat? He answered, While the child was still alive, I fasted and wept. I thought, Who knows? The Lord may be gracious to me and let the child live. But now that he is dead, why should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I will go to him, but he will not return to me. And David comforted his wife Bathsheba, and he went to her and lay with her. She gave birth to a son, and they named him Solomon. The Lord loved him, and because the Lord loved him, he sent word through Nathan the prophet to name him Jedidiah. Meanwhile, Joab fought against Rabbah on the Ammonites and captured the royal citadel. Joab then sent messengers to David, saying, I have fought against Rabbah and taken its water supply. Now muster the rest of the troops and besiege the city and capture it. Otherwise, I will take the city and it will be named after me. So David mustered the entire army and went to Rabbah and attacked and captured it. He took the crown from the head of the king. Its weight was a talent of gold, and it was set with precious stones, and it was placed on David's head. He took a great quantity of plunder from the city and brought out the people who were there, consigning them to labor with axes and with iron picks or saws and with iron picks and axes, and he made them work at brick making. He did this to all the Ammonite towns, and David and his entire army returned to Jerusalem. Here ends our first reading. Our second reading comes from 1 Chronicles chapters 16. They brought the ark of God and set it inside the tent that David had pitched for it and presented burnt offerings and fellowship offerings before God. And after David had finished sacrificing the burnt offerings and fellowship offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord. And he gave a loaf of bread, a cake of dates, and a cake of raisins to each Israelite man and woman. He appointed some of the Levites to minister before the Ark of the Lord, to make petition, to give thanks and praise the Lord, the God of Israel. Asaph was the chief, Zechariah II, then Jeel, Shemiramoth, Jehiel, Matthiah, Eliab, Benaiah, obed and Jael. They were played... They were to play the lyre and harp. Asaph was to sound the cymbals, and Benaiah and Jehaziel, the priests, were to blow the trumpets regularly before the Ark of the Covenant of God. That day David committed to Asaph and his associates this psalm of thanks to the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, call on his name. Make known amongst the nations what he has done. Sing to him, sing praise to him. Tell of all his wonderful acts. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. Remember the wonders he has done, his miracles and the judgment he pronounced. O descendants of Israel, his servant. O sons of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He remembers his covenant forever. The word he commanded for a thousand generations. The covenant he made with Abraham the oath he swore to Isaac. He confirmed it to Jacob as the decree to Israel as an everlasting covenant. To you I will give the land of Canaan as the portion you will inherit. When they were but a few in number, few indeed, and strangers in it, they wandered from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another. He allowed no man to oppress them. For their sake he rebuked kings. Do not touch my anointed ones. Do my prophets no harm. Sing to the Lord all the earth, proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all people. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all God, for all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him, strength and joy are in his dwelling place. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of nations. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering, come before him, worship the Lord in splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth, the world is firmly established, it cannot be moved. Let the heaven rejoice, let the earth be glad, let them say amongst the nations, the Lord reigns. 
Let the sea resound in all that is in it. Let the field be jubilant and everything in them. Then the trees of the forest will sing. They will sing for joy before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Cry out, save us, O God, our Savior. Gather and deliver us from the nations, that we may give thanks to your holy name, that we may glory in your praise. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Then all the people said, Amen, and praised the Lord. And David left Asaph and his associates before the Ark of the Covenant to the Lord to minister there regularly, according to each day's requirements. He also led Obed-Edom and his 68 associates to minister with them. Obed-Edom, son of Juduthan, and also Hosa were gatekeepers. David left Zadok the priest and his fellow priests before the tabernacle of the Lord at the high place in Gibeon to present burnt offerings to the Lord on the altar of burnt offerings regularly, morning and evening, in accordance to everything written in the law of the Lord, which he had given Israel. With them were Heman and Jeduthun, and the rest of those chosen and designated by name to give thanks to the Lord, for his love endures forever. Heman and Jeduthun were responsible for the sounding of the trumpets and cymbals and for playing of the other instruments for sacred song. The songs of Jeduthun were stationed at the gate. Then all the people left, each for his own home, and David returned home to bless his family. And as our second reading, our third reading is from Psalm 51. For the director of music, Song of David, when the prophet Nathan came to him after David, David had committed adultery with Bathsheba. So this speaks to our, our first reading in uh, 2 Samuel 12. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash me all, of all my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. Against you and you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are proved right when you speak and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Surely you desire truth in the inner parts. You teach me wisdom in the inmost place. Walk, clean me with hyssop, and wash, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will turn to you. Save me from blood guilt, O God. The God who saves me in my tongue will sing of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. You do not delight in sacrifice, or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O God, you will not despise. In your good pleasure make Zion prosper. Build the walls of Jerusalem. Then there will be righteous sacrifices who... Whole burnt offerings to delight you. Then bulls will be offered on your altar. Here ends our last reading. Psalm 51 is uh, a reflection of what we hear in 2 Samuel, yesterday's 2 Samuel 11 and today's 2 Samuel 12. As we, we hear about the uh, atrocities that David has done by killing Uriah, one of his most honored uh, soldiers. This was one of the uh, one of the thirty mighty men uh, that was valiant and and loyal as loyal can be to David, and that David, for the most part, had showed much kindness and grace and love, and who had gone before them and been their been their battlefront um, until this incident, uh, when David gets comfortable and starts making poor decisions. Uh, so, but God is always a gracious God, and David knows this. As he says, save me from my blood guilt. Do not delight. Uh, I know you don't delight in sacrifices because they're empty if there is no love uh, and if there is no confession um, of, of our sins. And so he says to him, I understand that the true sacrifice 
is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. Uh, because it's not until we show our vulnerability and our humanness and admit the sins, the wrongdoings that we do, that God is able to, to restore us. Uh, he restores our heart. He, he, he doesn't, he, he doesn't want just our lip service, but he wants our heart service. And so may we ever remember that. And then we hear about um, another instance in First Chronicles uh, 16. The Ark of, the, of God is pitched, uh, and David sings this beautiful psalm of thanksgiving and praise to God. And it's it's uh, it's it's very uh, heartwarming. Uh, this thanksgiving, you know, praising God of Israel from everlasting to everlasting, and that all the people uh, join together in the, this amen together, and then, and then it talks about how, I mean, those those uh, Levite priests that come together, um, playing trumpets and cymbals and all these instruments before God, and and how it was it was part of part of the the. Uh, tasks of the Israelites to provide beautiful music and service to God uh, that all might know and songs resound upon high uh, for the great God uh, that we serve and that God is a is a loving God who is willing to even overlook our sins and not put us to death. Uh, David deserved, as he said about the, the uh, parable that Nathan told him, that person who killed that sheep deserves death and four times over she would pay for it. And yet God says, I won't kill you. Uh, I said this to make you understand the graveness of your sin. But that I am not a God who delights in death. But I delight in life. And I want to give you life. But I want to make sure that you uh, know um, how terrible this was. Because you took a life. And you and you committed this atrocious atrocious, atrocious um committing adultery with Bathsheba and and uh, you, you forced yourself upon her as a leader who should be setting the example and so but David knows this he he in his in his Psalm 51 he he very much explains how this is wrong and he needs to be humbled before God and uh, yeah that's what God requires of us it isn't that weird he doesn't require us to live perfect lives even though he wishes we would uh, but what he does require is that when we do wrong, that we come to him in repentance and confession and that he restores us. Thanks be to this God who constantly uh, is there for our best interest, even though we oftentimes don't have the best interest in mind. Uh, we just thank God uh, when we do this through prayer. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we give you thanks and praise. Thank you for calling us to repentance where you remind us of our sins, but you also remind us of your gracious mercy. You offer your gift of mercy. Lord, we find ourselves often sliding like David, um, sliding away from your calling, our mission to serve you, sliding away from the anointing in which you have blessed us with, that we oftentimes reject you through this. We find ourselves like David does today, where Nathan says, uh, you thought this was done in the dark, but the Lord is going to bring it into the light. The Lord God saves us. He reveals our wounds. He reveals our sins in order that we might be brought into the light. Uh, we just ask God that you continue to keep us in your in in your light. Um, that you do whatever is needed in order to restore life to us again and again. You have our permission. So be it. Amen. I thank you for coming alongside me this day of Bible in a year, and I just pray that you would grow in the wisdom and knowledge and fear of the Lord as we learn about those who have also served God, like King David, and how, though, though unperfect, they still seek God's face and, and confess before him in order that they might be made right. May you also find that in your life, uh, that you might be made right with God and that you might be able to lift his name and praise uh, to, from everlasting to everlasting. Have a blessed day.